Take a ride around Braintree. On any normal day, I'm sure there's someone out there that would call this place beautiful. But right now just isn't a normal day when you turn off the engine and pause the music. With everyone in quarantine and no one in sight, it's become all too silent. No couples at the movie theater on a Saturday afternoon, no lines for coffee on a Monday morning, no movement in the mall on a Friday, and no kids at the high school on another average Tuesday. But Braintree isn't going anywhere as we continue to social distance. This town will still be waiting for you until we can come together again. Well, here we are on Womp TV, back and better than ever. Okay, so it's just, I made a video, right? And I just feel like no other seniors are doing any work. I don't know why. It's just the whole online learning thing and just everything. So I feel like we don't have a lot of videos. Like, it's just awkward without the studio and just the computer and phone thing, you know? Like, it's just weird. Um, actually, yeah, we've got videos. This is like a 30-minute show. Wait, are you being serious? Yes. Joke line. Oh, I, I think I was supposed to <laughs> make up a joke there. Um, see, it's not perfect. <laughs> okay, um, well, I guess we have a show then. We've got student opinions, teacher shout outs, and a special interview with a special teacher. Who? Guess you'll have to wait and see. Okay, this is fun and exciting. I'm, I'm ready. I want to see what people have done.
I want one and for Shane I think you got a little water on your bathroom mirror <laughs> I think you forgot to grab a bowl for your cereal <laughs> all right well hearing student opinions is always important Shannon Aiden and Kaylee give us theirs and some commentaries almost two months into this pandemic all of our lives have dramatically changed one way or another but our lives aren't the only things that have changed as a result of this the environment has, too. There are clear canals in Venice where people can actually see fish for once, and coyotes are crossing the Golden Gate Bridge, which is usually packed with cars. Also, with factories shutting down and most travel across the world coming to a halt, greenhouse gas emissions have decreased significantly. In satellite data released by NASA, nitrogen dioxide levels are down 30% in some major U.S. cities. Now, all of these changes in the environment are positive impacts of this terrible crisis, but it's important to remember that they are temporary. Eventually, when countries reopen and everyone comes out of quarantine, there's going to be a spike in emissions if we return to the old normal, and the long-term impact of this on the environment could nearly disappear. But there still is hope that we can continue the progress we've made, we just have to think of it as an opportunity to shift the way we live our lives. For example, it's likely that more people are going to be working from home after this, which will help to limit the amount of fossil fuels and pollution released into the air. But even more importantly, we need to remember that our climate is changing and drastic steps need to be taken very soon to prevent more damage from being caused in the future. So we can't stop the fight for better climate policy now. After all, We've already lived during one global crisis, and I for sure don't want the planet to get to a point where we have to live through another one. It's over. The greatest dynasty in the history of sports has come to an end because these two cowards decided to move on down to Tampa Bay and go hang out on the beach for a little bit. First, the GOAT, Tom Brady, signs a huge deal with the Bucks. Not a big deal. I mean, he's out of his prime by multiple years. The nail in the coffin, a couple weeks later, his friend Gronk is surprisingly traded the day of the NFL draft. And to make it even worse, these two are celebrating all over social media, not practicing rules of social distancing, mind you, and exclaiming their happiness to be out of New England, where they were a pra uh, loved and praised for all these years. I mean, it, it truly does hurt. At the end of the day, I think we will be fine because of the great front office we have with uh, Mr. Robert Kraft. And of course, our fearless leader, Bill Belichick, still leading the way with all his Super Bowl rings and all his smarts. I mean, let's be honest, Belichick definitely helped build Brady in a way. And I think he can rekindle that in a way with his next prodigy in Jared Stidham, who is ready to lead the offense back to that sixth Super Bowl that we know we can go win. So as for Brady and Gronk, I don't want to see them win a Super Bowl, not even close. I hope that we're back in the Super Bowl before they are. And I guarantee you we will win that before they will. Strive for seven, baby. Let's go, Pats. Feeling like your emotions are invalid is tough. The definition of emotional validation is when a person's feelings or opinions are rejected, ignored, or judged. This could be as little as telling your friend that you're not feeling good, you're upset, and they respond with, oh, I've been through this, this, and this this week, and you're upset? That is not okay. That is invalidating the person's feelings. That is making them feel like what they're feeling isn't okay because there's always worse. Just because someone is feeling a different type of pain from you, maybe in your opinion it's less pain than you are feeling, that does not mean that the pain they're feeling isn't affecting them as badly as your pain is affecting you. However, it doesn't have to be someone else invalidating your emotions. Oftentimes we do it to ourselves. You could say we're our own worst enemies. Take the COVID-19 pandemic as an example. As a senior, I feel like I'm missing and just losing a lot of my senior year. I'm missing prom, graduation. 
I never got to say goodbye to my teachers or friends. I just have to leave the school that I've spent three and a half years in with no solid goodbye. And it's tough because I felt so upset about this and I felt like I was missing out on so much. But I also realized that there's so much going on in the world and people are getting sick and people are dying hundreds each day that it made me feel like I wasn't allowed to be upset. I just knew that this problem I had was just so much smaller than the pandemic. Like they can't even be compared, but I still was upset and I still was hurt over what was happening. And then I realized I was invalidating my own feelings. I wasn't being insensitive or not sympathetic or not mindful of what was going on around me. I was being very mindful of everything that was happening in the world, but I still wasn't allowing myself to feel the pain of having my senior year canceled and that wasn't okay. I shouldn't have felt guilty for feeling upset over something that was truly painful to me. For someone, it could be the worst pain they've ever felt in their life. They could be reaching rock bottom, feeling awful, feeling so upset. And to you, it just may be a bump in the road for your life or what you've experienced. But that doesn't mean you should invalidate how they're feeling. You don't know how much pain they felt in their life. And if that's the worst amount of pain, then it's probably hitting them a lot and affecting them a ton. So if you don't agree with how someone feels or you wouldn't react the same way that they did, please just be sensitive because you never know if that's the worst thing they've ever gone through. You don't know if this is the worst pain they've felt. So just be mindful, be sensitive, and just think before you react or act at all. All in all, emotions are valid and it's okay to feel the way you do and you shouldn't have to hide it. And if you feel the people around you are invalidating your emotions, maybe just speak to them, tell them how you feel. Maybe they don't notice they're acting that way. Just let them know. Reporting for WAM TV, this is Kaylee Walsh. Kaylee, your commentary was so insightful. You described exactly how I felt, and I bet I'm not the only one who can say that. You know what? That actually makes me so happy to hear, because when I was recording this commentary, I was kind of thinking, like, am I the only one feeling this? But I was hoping that it would reach to, like, even other seniors or just people in general and just see if they're feeling the same and just have some sort of impact. So thank you. That means a lot to hear. Oh, 100%. I'm positive other people will be able to relate and also it was very nice to hear some good things about the environment it's nice to see something good coming out of something so tragic i know and it helps a little with the betrayal from gronk and brady that they left us with i know but somehow the news about brady and gronk isn't as gut-wrenching as this other sports story Wait, what do you mean? I thought there were no sports. Exactly. And WAMP TV reporter Aiden also spoke to a senior captain about the loss of their spring sports team. Hello, everyone. I am joined by Matthew Barry, volleyball player at Rachel High School. Uh, Matthew is a Patriot League All-Scholastic, Bay State League All-Star, BHS leader in block assist and solo blocks. Matt, how are you? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing very well, very well. So how have you been holding up during these uh, times of quarantine? Uh, holding up all right. Finding things to fill the time. Just managing. I gotcha. So, what was your reaction to hearing your senior season of volleyball would be canceled? Not to be a little bit dramatic, but it was it was pretty devastating, to be honest. I mean, I can't. I don't want to speak on behalf of the other seniors, but working hard for three years to finally get this opportunity to be, you know, the leaders on the team. Um, it it really it's it's really disappointing to not you know have that chance and as a as a program that was really like trying to build ourselves up this was going to be our year to not have it it's just heartbreaking yeah very hard very hard i can see where you're coming from what were your expectation expectations for the team this year i had really high expectations um coming off of a really not so great season last year we had a lot of guys putting in a lot of hard work in the off season um so I, I was really thinking that that hard work was, was going to uh, translate onto the court, and hopefully we were going to make tourney. Yeah, tourney's, tourney's always the goal. I know it. I got you. So what was the best memory you had playing at BHS over the past four years? My favorite 
memory is more of a collection. Uh, our Saturday morning practices, whether it be at 5 a.m. or 7 or wow. 10, they were all some of the best times I've had in my Granger High School career. You know, all of us showing up there half asleep, trying to put in like a ton of work to, you know, get to the next level. Um, had a lot of competitions on Saturday. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, you get the grind. So what would you, what's next for you, Matthew Barry? Uh, I'm going to study marine engineering at Massachusetts Maritime Academy, and I'll be playing football there, too. There you go. you got a bright future ahead of you. So for our final question, to send it off to the younger generations, people coming up, what's some advice knowing now that your last opportunity to play volleyball in high school has been taken from you? Um, that's a good question. A couple things, really. Don't, don't take anything for granted because, obviously, I did my junior season. I didn't think that uh, the last game of the season was going to be my last time suiting up with um, you know with my friends and stepping on court for the last time. That was, looking back on it now, I, I really wish I kind of took a step back and really appreciated everything. Um, and another thing, if you want to be good at something, no matter whether it's school, whether it's a sport, drawing, art, whatever it is, you need to put in the time. You need to give 110%. You got to, and that's said so much now with like all the like college coaches yeah, exactly. and college, but you know, that kind of idea. But it, it's true. If you want to be good at something, you got to pay your dues. You got to put in the, you got to put in the hard work. You Couldn't have said it better grind. myself. You gotta love the grind. Thank you for joining us, Matt. Go Womps. Thank you for having Go Womps. It's crazy. The NBA got canceled. The NHL got canceled. The Olympics got canceled. Like, I never saw this coming, truly. I never thought it would happen. For some people, it was their last season. No matter what grade you're in, everybody's missing out on something. However, I may have something that can lighten the mood. What is it? our special interview. We made fun of Shane earlier, but he actually did something pretty good. <laughs> what is it? Shane interviewed a teacher from afar. Here it is. Hello everybody, this is Shane Gurley. Now I'm with Mr. Howe right now from VHS, who's currently deployed in Japan, right? That's correct. Japan, Okinawa, Japan? Yep. All right, perfect. But I'm gonna just start off with, uh, how you doing? How's everything there? Ah. Things are all right here. Uh, about the same as I imagine they're holding up back home. All this mm -hmm. craziness going on, but uh, we're doing all right. Yeah, so I, first question I wanted to ask you, so let's start with, like, the current news. So how has this, like, quarantine and virus affected you in Japan? Uh, really, it's, uh, I, I imagine it's kind of the same as what's going on back home with you guys. We uh, can't go much – or we can't go many places. There's uh, We have the chow hall, and we have our kind of uh, – our commissary, we get some food and stuff. But uh, mm -hmm. just going there, we got to wear face masks. We have to get our temperature taken before we get into the building. We have to wash our hands three times. And then really you have crazy. to make a log for, like, everyone you come in contact oh, yeah. with or yeah. something, too. I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, we had to start making a, uh, like, a daily diary of every single person oh. we come into contact with. That's so, crazy. How's the fun. food there? <laughs> Not the pretty food? terrible. Pretty <laughs> terrible. <laughs> <laughs> just expected. <laughs> I've had worse, so I can't complain, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. All right. So, I want to just ask, too, what made you want to join the Marines in, like, the first place? Because it seems kind of crazy being, like, a teacher, like, a Marine. <laughs> like, it's like a police officer going to be, like, a librarian. It just seemed like two, like, opposites, <laughs> kind of. Like, what? <laughs> That's a pretty good point. Pretty good point. I think uh, I wanted to be a Marine first uh, when I was a lot younger. And as I got older, uh I ended up finding a love for teaching when I was in college. So tried to naturally find a way I could possibly do both. But uh, I think, honestly, ironically enough, they both have a lot in common. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I, I enjoy both because I get to help people. Um, and uh, <laughs> again, ironically, being here is kind of like being a teacher. You just, unfortunately, everyone knows where you live and they never leave you alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, Prior to the quarantine, what was, like, your reasoning for being in Japan? Uh, so the reason we come over here is the, uh, the Marines have a presence in the Pacific where we are basically located here so we can be anywhere in the Pacific. We need to be faster than if we were lo located back in the United States. 
So we mm -hmm. always have a, a certain number of battalions out here that are ready to respond to any kind of crisis or humanitarian response or anything that might, well, might happen. Um, that's part of the reason actually we're still stuck here right now is we're supposed to leave about a month ago, but until they can get another battalion out here to replace us, they don't want us leaving and having our numbers down. And is like the whole like traveling, like the new um, people can't come in right now because the virus that, so exactly, kind yeah, of leave so. it. You're so you're kind of just stuck there, waiting to come home. Pretty much, yeah. Man. Yeah, I've been waiting here for a while. If any luck, we'll be home in the yeah. next uh, next couple of weeks or month or so. Well, your return is very much anticipated at Brantry High. I can speak on behalf of the majority of students. I'm very happy so. to hear that. I cannot wait to be back and see you guys. And what's like? What was the most challenging part about being deployed in Japan? Uh. I think honestly, the only real challenging part is just being away for so long. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, it's hard on families. They really kind of they have it tougher than I do. Um, mm -hmm. So you just do your best, stand by, and stick through whatever you have to stick through. And that's uh, it's really, I think, the only hard part I've mm -hmm. had out here. Well, you're making them home or making them proud at home. <laughs> Doing a great thing. Thank you, Stan. I appreciate that. But what was your uh, favorite part about being deployed there? Uh, favorite part is uh, probably the, the traveling aspect and getting to see a lot of the world with a lot of my guys. Uh, we're mm -hmm. pretty tight crew out here, uh, me and my Marines, and getting to interact with other cultures, other, uh, other countries' militaries. That was a pretty cool experience. Um, I've never been to Asia before in my life, so I got to mm -hmm. learn a whole lot. Yeah. Do you get to like learn from like the people there, too? Like, oh yeah, what their oh, yeah. like cultures like. That's very cool. Yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of tough learning curves out here. <laughs> oh yeah, but so I kind of we already kind of touched on this, but so you will be back after like this whole situation is over. Mm -hmm. You just oh, yeah. don't know a day yet because we don't we even don't know, know this will end. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm really hoping to be back in the uh, the halls of BHS next September. Oh yeah, they hope you're back too. So. <laughs> This is kind of more of a personal question. What was your yeah, fondest absolutely. memory of boot camp? Uh, boot camp. Yeah, I hear uh, someone I know might be heading over that way soon, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Proud to hear it. Uh, fondest memory. Wow. There's not a lot of fond memories in boot camp. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, my fondest memory is uh, so near the end of boot camp, you go through a, uh, an event I'm sure you've heard of, Shane, called the Crucible. Crucible. Yeah. Yeah, it's about <laughs> like two and a half days. You uh, you really don't sleep. Or you don't really don't eat much. You're kind of on the go constantly. And uh, I don't know, as ironic as it sounds, and as strange as it might sound, that those are kind of the moments in the Marine Corps where you really learn to push yourself beyond any limits you thought you previously mm -hmm. had. And uh, doing it, especially with the people to your left and right, is what make it even more meaningful. You uh, you learn a lot about people. You uh. Mm -hmm create a lot of bonds of people through shared hardship that you really can't replicate anywhere else. You might not mm -hmm. be able to stand someone and they annoy you all the time, but you still, you have that bond because you, you went through something together, something tough. Uh, yeah. yeah. Probably as, as fondness goes, I think that's about as fond as it gets. <laughs> yeah. So the crucible, it's like, I know you said like lack of food, lack of sleep. It's like, yeah. they kind of like reenact like a battle scenario, right? Like gunshot much, sounds yeah. like, and it's like oh, a yeah. long hike or something. You have to, yeah, like, there's travel. a whole lot of hiking. Whole lot of hiking. I'm looking, looking forward to that. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can have a great time. I, hope, but I, I heard they got a good barber down there, too. I haven't been able to get a haircut. <laughs> oh. uh, don't worry. You won't have hair for about yeah. 13 weeks. <laughs> I'm sure they can right, fix right my hair. I hear my hair for as long as it's been in a month or <laughs> a year. And but. I was going to – so next question, not really a question, but do you have – any advice for like future Marines or someone going in? Uh, yeah, uh, I guess for anyone considering joining the military, the Marine Corps specifically, just uh, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. Um, mm -hmm. you know, for your own personal reasons, because that's something when you uh, when uh, when you're when you're down, and you're going through a real tough scenario. That's something you're gonna have to hold on to pretty tight in order to get through it. Uh, if you don't, if you don't really know why you're doing it, then you won't have mm -hmm. a very good time. And then it's my last thing. 
do you have like a final message you want to say to the class of 2020? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. Um, dear class of 2020, Mr. Howe here. <laughs> I know most of you guys. Um, I just want to say uh, I know it's pretty tough right now, especially for you guys, not having a graduation and all that. Uh, I can't imagine. Um, for what it's worth, I know it's a little bit different, but actually uh, six years ago today uh, was my college graduation. Uh, I didn't make it because I was actually shipping off to boot camp today. But uh, I get where you guys are coming from, and uh, don't be afraid. If anything else, all this craziness going on, and the, the biggest thing that makes people panic and, and worry the most is just the fear of the unknown. So don't worry. Humankind's been through some tough stuff before, and we've always proved resilient enough to get through it. It's really what you do with all this that's going on right now. Decide if you turn out positive or negative. So put your mind to the task. Be strong. We'll get through this. I promise. That's it. Pull, pulling out the heartstrings there, man. That's no, not yeah. a great dream. I, lo no, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> From Japan, this was Shane Gurley and Mr. Howe signing off. Did Shane just say he was in Japan? Yeah, he did. But just to clarify, Shane is in Braintree. Mr. Howe is in Japan. It was really great to hear from him. All right, we're almost out of time for today. Make sure you check out the Wompcast on Apple Music and Spotify. Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Womp TV, And don't forget to stay tuned for our senior episode. You won't want to miss it. To end off today's episode, we're going to listen to some teacher shout outs from Braintree High students. Parking lots may be empty and school may be closed, but that hasn't stopped our teachers from helping us to learn. So for this Teacher Appreciation Week, we wanted to say thank you to just a few of all our great teachers. Ms. Lang, thank you so much for everything this year. I have loved every moment of being a part of your AP government and politics class. I have truly enjoyed every moment, and I cannot thank you for being such a supportive and wonderful teacher. I miss you so much, and I hope you're doing well. Thank you for everything. Thank you to Mr. Freeman for always putting a smile on my face when I walk into class. I'll miss your teaching style so much and your unique sense of humor. I want to thank Mr. Pelletier for being such a dedicated teacher, for always believing in his students, and for always making us laugh. Thank you, Ms. Mulcairns, for making class so fun and interesting this year. Also, thank you for making trigonometry slightly less horrible than it actually is. <laughs> it was much easier when you helped us through it every day in class, so thank you. I'd like to thank Mrs. Gorman for being a really great teacher making English class really memorable this year. Thank you, Mr. Jeffries, for being an amazing AP literature teacher. I've enjoyed our different conversations and learning and reading throughout the year. I just want to say thank you to Mr. Nellis and Mrs. Hurley because they were the best teachers that I had the last four years. And they always encouraged me to go out and like follow my dreams and everything like that. And they both wrote my college recommendations and I got into all the schools that I applied to. So thank you. Hola, Senora Jameson. I just wanted to say uh, thank you so much for being my teacher for the past two years. Uh, you, you really like helped me expand like my voc vocabulary when it comes to the Spanish. Uh, I would like to give a shout out to Miss Eckler. She's an awesome teacher. And even though I haven't had her since sophomore year, I've always felt welcome in her class just to like talk to her. Um, so I would like to thank her for making my high school experience more enjoyable. I want to say thank you to Mr. Pelletier for going that extra mile and being such an awesome history teacher and making that class so much fun. So thank you very much. Gracias, Senor Nichols, for always creating such a happy environment to walk into every single day and never failing to make me smile both in person and virtually. Yes, I have been working. I actually am an essential worker. I work at a retirement home and we make bagged lunches for the residents. Oh, I'm also essential. Um, I work in an ice cream shop. I serve ice cream when they need it. Um, I have some ice cream stains on my mask too for proof of my um, labor. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, actually it's perfect because I brought you a mask too. <gasps> really? Can so I? Yeah, you'll need the ice cream stained one. Yeah. Here, I'll give it to you. Oh, thanks. Oh. <laughs> Looks a little different. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how, did, how did that happen? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's good. <laughs>